the moon. Your modality is cardinal. And your element is water. This means that you lead with your emotions. And your motto, I feel. As a Cancer, your feelings define and empower you. As a zodiac sign ruled by the moon, La Luna herself, you hold an ancient wisdom within your soul that not only makes you an old soul tied to memories and the treasures of the past, but that also gives you a deep inner knowing with which you lead your life bravely, soulfully, providing a deep well of love and strength for others, especially those you call family along the way. Being associated with the element of water means that your feelings often ebb and flow like this high. While this might be considered being moody to some, actually using your feelings like a barometer, adjusting to the temperature of the room, whether it's with another person or within a situation. But when it comes to your feelings, just make sure that you don't allow them to sweep you out to sea. As with the crab that represents your sign, very few can get through your tough outer shell Unless, of course, you want them to. In love, it takes a special person to get past your walls. You're a passionate lover who gets off on intuiting and feeding your lover's every whim, followed by postcoital cuddling and midnight snacks. You win your lovers over with your bossy yet nurturing style. Yet at the same time, you're turned on by take charge types that know what's good for you and will happily provide. Being a Cancer means that they have to love you just as hard and as tenderly as you do. this 
this might be considered being moody to some, you're actually using your feelings like a barometer, adjusting to the temperature of the room, whether it's... Hi, everybody. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Uh, my name is Candice Reyes. I am your host for this evening. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in tonight with us uh, on the Exchange Live Sessions. Uh, we're super, super excited for tonight's show, um, and we got a lot of, of things to cover. Uh, some new music, some projects, some talks about stories of music, and all this good stuff with our special guest. But before that, just for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, we are the Jazz Exchange uh, Abel Mireles, my husband, and myself are the founders of this organization. Uh, and so if you'd like to know more about what we do, uh, we have our handles of our Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and our website. Please, please, you know, go out and support us, visit us, see what we're doing um, in our hometowns and locally here in the New Jersey, New York area. Um, so it's always, ha it's always great to get, you know, new visitors coming in, seeing what we're doing. Um, always good to hear feedback from people as well. So please follow us and check us out on our social media pages. Um, I also want to mention we have our educational program. So the educational program with the Jazz Exchange, we are partnered with the amazing um, Jazz House Kids nonprofit organization with Melissa Walker and Christian McBride. Um, and with the ja educational jazz uh, program that we do with the Jazz Exchanges, my husband and Abel, uh, Abel and myself, we're, we're from, I'm originally from El Paso, Texas, and Abel's from Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. And so what we do is we get students from our hometown to be part of the Jazz House Kids Summer Workshop uh, with sponsors and, you know, help and support from the local areas and also from you know from you sponsors and donors who are supporting the organization it really gives um hope inspiration and motivation to our students from the west coast uh you know to get an experience on the east coast so thanks to um, jazz house kids and in partnership with s smart from what is chihuahua so yeah please if you'd like to know more please visit our website on that um, also, I want to mention uh, when the pandemic started, we started the Jazz Exchange Relief Fund. That was something that was super important to us, us being full time musicians as well. We understand how important it is for artists, you know, just to lose um, work in, in, in so many ways. Um, and we found creative ways to continue working. But with that, you know, it's always been supportive and helpful when people are able to help and just, you know, donate. And through the Jazz Exchange Relief Fund, we have created our virtual jazz session programs that you can see on our YouTube. We pay artists to perform. We continue to be creative um, and motivate and really building community through, through those programs. Um, so I'm really, really happy with, you know, some of the products and, and projects that we've worked with. Um, if you'd like to know more, check out our YouTube page. We have all our virtual jazz sessions. Uh, we will have one coming up soon and we'll be posting that. So go to our newsletter, find out what, what's coming up soon with that. All right. So um, this month is marking the end of Black History Month, which we celebrate, but all year long, we celebrate Black excellence, Black music. We, we celebrate everything. And so Every year, Black History Month stands as a time for not, us to not only to reflect um, on our collective history and remember those who have laid everything on the lines for freedom, but to reignite our dedication to dismantling sy systemic barriers that prevent our nation from truly having justice for all. And so this month celebration with the Jazz Exchange Live Sessions, uh, we've, we've spotlighted and we are spotlighting different artists by amplifying black voices and empowering black artists. So we're very excited um, for that. And we also have a, um, at, at every show uh, this month, we have highlighted a black owned business. And with that, the black owned business, we wanted to highlight today's uh, business. Um, so I'm gonna read a little bio on the Brooklyn Brood Sorrel is a delightful non-alcoholic brewed and aged naturally sweet and complex hibiscus spiced beverage with over 400 year Caribbean heritage founded by Nzinga Knight. Uh, recommended by James Beard Foundation, Bon Appetit Magazine, Epicurious, and countless fans, 
Many say their mocktail tastes better than wine. So Nzinga's aim is to elevate and share the richness and natural goodness of the exotic tastes of Caribbean drinks in their authentic form while making them widely available within the U.S. market. So please go out and check out Brooklyn Brewed Sorrel. Uh, this is a, a business, a local owned business, and we want to make sure we highlight them, support them, um, and heard some really good things about the mocktails. So later on in the in, at the end of this show, we're going to be doing some giveaways. So in order to win uh, or to get some of these giveaways, you must be live with us. So tune in at the end of today's uh, show. All right. So without further ado, I am super excited and uh, very, very honored to have our special guest this evening who is tuning in with us. Um, and I want to bring him on to our live stream. So without further ado, um, this is a Chicago owned one and only award winning trumpeter, Mr. Marquise Hill. Marquise, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I, glad to be. Oh, man. I'm, I'm so glad to have you, man. It's so good to see you virtually. Uh, you know, we're always listening to your music, but to see you virtually, how, how are you doing? Where are you tuning in from right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm well, you know, taking things day by day, just pouring my energy into creating. Uh, but I'm in Chicago right now. All right. From Windy City. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, man. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. You're staying safe and still creating. Um, as most of you all know, um, you're an amazing award-winning trumpet player that's been well recognized. You're not only a trumpet player, you're an educator, you're a composer, a touring artist, a band leader. Um, and for those who, you know, who are new to the music jazz scene, let's just say, um, we just kind of want to get to know you a little bit better and really, you know, see dig into some of uh, Marquise Hill's archives there and, and, and see what's going on. Um, with that, how did you start playing? How did you get started even playing trumpet? What, what were the beginning stages of Marquise Hill? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I started, you know, music. I joined the elementary school band in the fourth grade. Uh, but I, I joined playing the drums and I switched to the trumpet in the fifth grade. But I was fortunate enough to have a family who played great music around me. Mm. Uh, just all, always, you know, in my house, I was accustomed to hearing, you know, Temptation, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, like all this great black soul music. So that's been with me since as long as I can remember. But I actually started playing music in the fourth grade, switched to the trumpet in the fifth grade kind of played throughout elementary school, high school, started to get serious. Yeah. Uh, when I recognized that, you know, you can actually get scholarship money, you can make a career out of this. So I got serious in high school. I went to college for music education. Mm. Then I went to grad school uh, for jazz pedagogy. Um, and then I just started creating projects and I really wanted to get my music out there. So I started creating projects and recording and it's kind of how, how I'm here today, you know. Man, man. And I mean, just just all those things, you know, how how just the the young generation, anybody who's tuning in, you know, who are starting their career in music, you know, it's just starting in band or in school and having mentors and educational programs uh, such as what you're mentioning. And so with that, you know, you being from Chicago, I know and I've heard uh, and I've seen that you're very involved with your hometown and, you know, giving back and being part of, you know, different organizations or supporting organizations um, in your area. And so how has that, you know, what are you, what are you doing currently in your hometown? Are you, are you, I know you're with the, um, I was reading with the South Shore Youth Jazz Ensemble with the Chicago uh, Symphony, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was, that's the local symphony. Are you a director there? No, I'm not. Okay. And the, the South Shore Youth Jazz Ensemble, that was, um, it's no longer actually happening. But really? That was an ensemble, yeah, that I was a part of, you know, throughout elementary school, okay. going throughout high school. Um, it was a beautiful program. Actually, it was very unique. Mm. It was a big band. It was a big band where kids can actually come in each summer and get paid to rehearse Monday through Friday and perform on Saturdays, you know, so wow. for me, it was formative, and that's how I actually met Professor Ronald Carter. I don't know, I'm sure you're familiar with Ronald Carter, yeah, 
alto saxophonist, extremely incredible educator. Yeah. He was uh, he was head of the jazz program at Northern Illinois University for 14 years. And that's actually how I met him through the South Shore Youth Jazz Ensemble. And that's how I actually went to Northern Illinois. I was so inspired by Professor Carter. Wow. Uh, NIU. Um, but just getting back to your question, like, it's, that's such a thing rooted in the music. We have to pass the knowledge that we we gain to the next generation. You know, my mentors did it to me, and I feel like it's my job to do it to the next generation here in Chicago. So um, I've actually been living in New York for the past four or five years, but I'm here now, you know, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I came back home, um, and I've just been reaching out to the younger cats on the scene, just getting together, playing, and picking their minds, and writing music. So just, just having a more hands-on approach uh, to the Chicago scene nowadays. Man, that's great. I mean, they're they're lucky to have you, you know, and, and doing that because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure how old you are and you don't have to tell me how old you are, but, you know, <laughs> at that, at, when you reach a certain age and you get, we, it's kind of like this shift, right? It's the shift of, you know, you've gone through the process of, of being mentored. You've gone through these edu educational programs and, you know, all these award awards that you've been recognized for, you know, you're playing and, and these ensembles and bands that you've been part of or special guests, you know, I'm sure, you know, it just really brings you back to this. I want to give this and pay it forward, right, to to kids and young generations who are striving to do the same and you being their their mentor. Absolutely. One hundred percent. It's I mean. Again, it's it's engraved in the history of this music, mm. like passing the knowledge back. But me personally, as an artist, I just feel like it's my obligation. It's my duty, you know, being a part of that continuum, passing the knowledge on. Yeah. And hopefully they pass it on and the next generation to pass it on. And that's how the music stays alive and well. Yeah. And, and kind of segueing or, you know, going into what you're just mentioning, how I mean, how do you know, I always get this question from young, you know, musicians, and this is outside of school. When you're not in school and you're just starting and you're getting involved in music, you know, how do you know when you find your mentor? How do you know to even reach out to somebody to start getting mentored by some someone? What, what, what mm -hmm. advice or suggestion, you know, because you're doing it, you're being active. But then there's some students out there that might say, like, I'm too scared. You know, he's too good. He's too, you know, well recognized. And, and if I, you know, if I shoot him a text or an email, like, how do I even know he's going to answer? You know, there's that fear sometimes of this, like, we we honor, we're honoring you. We, we respect you and, and do everything that you're doing. How do you what do you suggest on that? Honestly, I suggest students in that situation to just do it, you know, get over, try your best to get over that fear. And also keep in mind that the, the individual that they're most likely reaching out to, you know, they're serious about this music and they know that mentorship is a part of this music. So keep that in mind when they're reaching out to these people, because they'll most likely receive them with open arms, you know, because it really is in the culture of this music to mentor and pass this knowledge down you know yeah definitely uh, definitely but just not being afraid get, getting over that fear and, and and doing it really reach out you know yeah it's like taking your first solo on the on the tune that you're learning it's like oh <laughs> i might not know all the changes or i i practiced it so many times and then you just get nervous yeah. right just do it you gotta, you gotta hop you gotta hop in the fire that's it that's, <laughs> yeah that's exactly it. exactly that's now good. speaking of mentors uh marquise who have been some of your mentors that have that that I mean I'm sure there's many but who have been you know somebody that you can say man I still talk to them you know today or I, I still go back and mm -hmm. ask them you know who have been some of your mentors absolutely I actually mentioned two of my major mentors uh, Diane Ellis mm. from Dixon Elementary School maybe I didn't mention Diane no no Ellis, no uh, yeah I didn't excuse me uh, but she was the band director at Dixon Elementary School when I it's a school on the elementary school on the south side of Chicago. Mm. Jumping around, excuse me. Uh, that's where I went for elementary school, and that's where I was exposed to this great music. Uh, and I, I give a lot of credit to her for exposing me to this great music. You know, I was in the again the fifth grade. You know, man, a lot of, I don't hear too many people say my elementary school teacher or band teacher 
was you know my first start i mean i do know but but i don't i don't hear it as much so it's so great that you have her as a mentor yeah exactly and you know during that time this was one of the only elementary school we mean mm. kindergarten through eighth grade with the full jazz band program wow she was a touring musician herself so she really ingrained the history of this music in the just the the, the honor it is to play this music. She made us research the history. She made us research some of the major legends in this music. And, you know, that really stuck with me. So Miss Ellis, beautiful. Diane Ellis. Shout out. I always, I always shout her out. Uh, Dixon Elementary School, South Side of Chicago, fourth, fifth grade, you know, researching Dizzy Gillespie, you know, researching Dexter Gordon. She was very serious about this. That's so great. That's, there's a lot of power in being exposed to this music at a young, young age. So mentorship is it's just important there's no way around it and then you also mentioned ronald carter right who was with exactly. part of part of the south shore youth jazz ensemble mm -hmm. that's that's great. ronald carter yeah he was another one uh, again i met him seventh eighth grade through this south shore youth jazz ensemble where we were paid every summer to that's great rehearse. what a great you know, concept of you know people and young students being disciplined not only like learning the industry of saying my craft mm -hmm. i can i can make money if i do this right if i'm disciplined if i show up on time it's like a lot of discipline and showing you know just general moral how to show up to a gig when to show up how to go be dressed up yes. i'm sure that's like you learned exactly. everything that full package you know exactly. without even exactly. knowing you're learning it. <laughs> exactly exactly it's, it's powerful you know that's great and and i want to fast forward because um, you know, you, you went to school and you went to elementary school and then you went and you did um, University of Illinois or where, where is it that you were studying for your undergrad? Yeah, I went to um, Northern Illinois Northern. University, okay. which is where Professor Carter, um, he was the head of the program for 14 years. Wow. And when I met him, you know, seventh, eighth grade through this South Shore Youth Jazz Ensemble I was telling you about, mm -hmm. I was just inspired, you know, to, to go to school you know he he inspired me to go to northern illinois university where he was teaching and it was just an instant connection he took me under his wing and you know it's just been love since since day one and he's one of those prestigious educators everybody knows professor carter has worked with him in some sort mm -hmm. and it was a blessing for me to meet him the way that i did that's great that's great yeah. and and then after that did you went and did your master's um where, where did you go do your master's yeah, uh, I came back to Chicago. Okay. Uh, North, Northern Illinois is about an hour and a half west of Chicago. Ah, got it. Okay. And, and I did my master's at DePaul University, which is in kind of in the heart of the city. Very nice. Now, when did you move to New York, or when did you do the the leap to say, I'm gonna go to New York, start doing my thing, get exposure, you know, start playing with cats up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I graduated grad school 2012. Um, and at that time I was, you know, putting out my own projects, touring around Chicago and the Midwest. But again, I wanted to just kind of expand and, you know, move, move to New York. I moved to New York in 2014. That's when I, uh, I made the big move and it was a beautiful decision. You know, I was able to get out there and network with musicians Yeah. and New York is the type of city where just simply being there mm -hmm. makes you better. Just being around all this incredible talent makes you a better musician. Yeah. And I really, really wanted to experience that. And yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and I know in 2014 is when you won the prestigious, um, Thelonious Monk Institute competition. And, and I know from that, you know, your career just started, you know, uprising and, and getting more opportunities, uh, mm -hmm. with the record labels and, and building your, uh, repertoire and, and different um, music albums, you know, I, I mean, I've uh -huh. just been, you know, impressed going through your discography of, of all the albums you've started and, and, and have done. I mean, they've been so amazing. And so I want to, I want to touch base because like all of you listening today and watching, we have some great music and I want to go right into what we were just listening to at the beginning of, of the intro of this live stream. Um, and that's from your recent album called Soul Sign. And that is, we were listening to a song entitled Cancer. 
And so I, before I even asked, I'm like, I, I was going to ask you, are you, what, what is your, your astrology, like astrology sign or what, what are you? Mm-hmm. I'm in the Aries. I'm an Aries, sun, Scorpio, moon, and a Virgo rising. <laughs> ah, very nice. Very nice. So yeah, yeah. tell us a little bit about the, the, this album. Um, this is the most recent album. Um, and mm-hmm. what, you know, what, what's it about? Yeah, you know, Soul Sign. It's it's a project. It's really one of uh, one of my quarantine babies. You know, at the beginning <laughs> of, <laughs> you know what I'm talking yep. about. Beginning of last year when everything was shut down, all of all of us creatives and artists, we, you know, we had all this time to be in the house creating. So, <clears throat> I was getting deeper into astrology and just how much truth is in you know the stars and how the moon moves through different signs every three days and how the energy shifts. Mm -hmm. I just really got into astrology and I wanted to, you know, express that interest through music as artists, you know, that's what we do. So I um, created this 12 track beat tape. Um, It features two astrologers, Mm -hmm. two astrologers from New York. Yeah. Uh, Boro, his name is Boro, the Lucky Libra and Mecca Woods, two astrologers that I met in New York. Wow. We got in the studio made the music and it was a, it turned out to be a beautiful project i just really wanted to dig deeper into you know some of the truth that's in astrology and this was you know the product of that and and how how did you meet up with these astrologers like how did it even work out like did you just call mm-hmm. them up one day or were you following them already like that's interesting mm-hmm. the power of social media you know <laughs> uh-huh. using, using youtube just checking out different channels different podcasts mm-hmm just getting as much knowledge as I could and certain astrologers resonated with me. And I said, you know, I, I hear her voice. I hear this guy's mm. voice music. So I, you know, I reached out to them and they both were extremely into the project. That's um, cool. We made it happen. That's cool. Well, I, I, I want to take a listen to this song again for those who were, uh, you know, just tuning in. Um, so if you guys can turn up your volumes and we're going to listen to, uh, Marquise Hill's latest uh, album, uh, Soul Sign, and this is a song entitled Cancer. Cancer. Your ruling planet is the moon. Your modality is cardinal. And your element is water. This means that you lead with your emotions. And your motto? I feel. As a Cancer, your feelings define and empower you. As a zodiac sign ruled by the moon, La Luna herself, you hold an ancient wisdom within your soul that not only makes you an old soul tied to memories and the treasures of the past, but that also gives you a deep inner knowing with which you lead your life bravely, soulfully, providing a deep well of love and strength for others, especially those you call family along the way. Being associated with the element of water means that your feelings often ebb and flow like the tide. While this might be considered being moody to some, You're actually using your feelings like a barometer, adjusting to the temperature of the room, whether it's with another person or within a situation. But when it comes to your feelings, just make sure that you don't allow them to sweep you out to sea. As with the crab that represents your sign, very few can get through your tough outer shell Unless, of course, you want them to. In love, it takes a special person to get past your walls. 
you're a passionate lover who gets off on intuiting and feeding your lover's every whim, followed by post-coital cuddling and midnight snacks. You win your lovers over with your bossy yet nurturing style, yet at the same time, you're turned on by take charge types that know what's good for you and will happily provide. Being a Cancer means that they have to love you just as hard and as tenderly as you do. I love now, you know, like you just explaining like she was an astrologer, just really giving the whole concept of uh, the cancer. And and my husband, Abel's a cancer. So I was cracking up <laughs> because I was like, oh, my God, there's a lot of the, I, I see that, you know, there's a lot of connection with that. And, you know, I love how cancers are connected to the moon. Uh, yeah. And and so. I, I was laughing. I, I was laughing at some of these things. I was like, "Oh my god, that's so true!" You know, like <laughs> making that connection. I I'm uh -huh. curious of how you even started. You know, this project. Did you start it based off of each sign? Like, I'm curious of how this project even came about. Like, what was your concept? Did you listen to the astrologer first and put the music behind it, or did you create the music first and had the astrologer? just come or was it a mix of two what what was the concept on that mm -hmm. well I, I spent i first spent you know I, i mean i've been into astrology for a while but throughout this quarantine i kind of just dug deeper so i spent the first you know month or, or two really just checking out different platforms of astrologers talking about the different signs and the archetypes of the signs mm -hmm. to the point where i felt you know that i was comfortable mm -hmm. enough to go into the studio and create sounds to mimic the energy and the archetype of each sign. So it started with just studying the knowledge. And then I linked up, I actually linked up with the incredible producer. His name is uh, Genghis Don, um, Don. Linden, an inc incredible drummer out of New York. Um, yeah, heard of yeah and we got together in two weeks and we just sat and, and talked about each sign, the energy behind each sign and really tried to mimic that musically um then i did the horns and it really just came together organically and once Beautiful. the music was complete i went into the studio with the astrologers and then they did their thing and it, it just came together beautifully yeah that is the correct word it was beautiful and you feel it you have that connection um man i loved it and we're you know a lot of people are tuning in and just loving it and giving you some some hearts and and love over there on that end um my cancers wait what's your sign you gotta tell me your <laughs> i'm sign. an aries i'm an aries yeah <laughs> so it's so funny because when <laughs> when the can when she was saying like the cancer is like more um leans towards more of a dominant like stronger character i was like oh no <laughs> That's, that's, maybe that is that's me. You. Yeah, I was like, that's "Oh no, you. that is me. That is me." I, I, I'm saying too much to our listeners. They don't. Need, they don't need to know too much about you. Yeah. <laughs> about the Aries. But no, I'm. I and it's funny because I've read into certain things on how, um, I'm 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 towards the end of the Aries um area. Like, my birthday is on the April 18th, and so mm -hmm. I have some uh Taurus in me because I'm at like right mm -hmm. at the brink of like being in between but it says I'm yeah, more the yeah, yeah the cusp that's that's the word um and so I'm more on the airy side but I do have like the cusp and I was like oh no Tauruses are stubborn <laughs> oh no no just kidding <laughs> they are <laughs> so Abel shaking his head like yeah no <laughs> no but I think it's beautiful I mean I've listened to it. I, I did. I'm not going to lie. I did go and listen to the Aries and I was like, wow, it's it's hitting a lot of some of these personality and just like the connection, right? The connection to the music. I love mm -hmm. how and I, I think I've known this about you when I first I got to share this story 
when Abel and I first moved from uh, El Paso and, and Juarez area to uh, New Jersey, New York area, you know, we, we, we were like, man, we got to go, we got to go to our uh, first jazz club. Like, where's the first jazz club? Like we, you know, we, we had, we'd gone out to eat dinner and then we said, let's just go out late. Let's just drive. Like we didn't know nothing about, you know, New York and we were just so happy to go and and we ended up at smoke and as we're walking in, we see Marquise Hill, we see Willem Dallas Fort, we're seeing like, I mean, uh, Jonathan Michelle, I think, I, I, you know, all these amazing guys. Obviously, I didn't know, I didn't know everybody's name at the time or I wasn't familiar with everybody. And me and Abel just like looked at each other and we were like, damn, <laughs> like we're coming. This is our first group that we're coming and listening and just like live music. It was such an amazing experience. And I thank you guys for that. And I thank, you know, Willem, who's also been a great friend of ours and has we've played and played with him many times and Mm-hmm. and we've we've kept our friendship and i think it's just been so amazing how that really sh- you know we were like wow we gotta know who this guy is we we found out who you were marquise we found out who will and was you know like we just made that connection and it's like going back to what we said at the beginning just going and making the connection going and talking to people I mean, if we didn't do it, I wouldn't be having, you know, the opportunity to talk with you because I met Willem or because, you know, uh-huh. it's just these connections of how, you know, some people don't know you sometimes and they're never going to know you if you never like present yourself or put yourself in the presence of, of people. And I don't know if you, you know, what you would suggest on that end. Like to younger yeah. students. And, I mean, similar to what we were saying earlier, just... You, you, you have to put yourself out there. Um, just try to do what you need to do to shake that fear and, and, <laughs> and, and reach out to these mentors, reach out to these people that you idolize and you look up to. Uh, because again, like I said before, a lot of, a lot of these people who are serious in this mm-hmm. music they realize that mentorship and passing down this music and the continuum, it's a, it's a part of the history of this music. So they're looking for yeah. young young eager musicians to take under their wings to you know pass this knowledge down to so just just do it you know and like you said the magic of social media like guys just go and and send a message on social media or or, you know liking a page won't really give you much but you know send a message on on messenger or find out go to the the website you know that's what we did you know and and that's how you get sign up for a lesson yeah Just sign, sign up, up for, for a lesson, lesson, even if it's not your instrument. Uh, that's my, that would be a, uh, that's a good question. Do you, or have you given lessons to non-trumpeters? Yes, absolutely. How important yeah. is that? Like what, talk a little more on that. I'm curious. I mean, when we're dealing with this music jazz, it's, it's a language, you know? So it's not necessarily about, you know, the, the instrument you're playing. Uh, I do give lessons to a lot of trumpet players because we talk about fundamentals mm. and sound. But, you know, I remember I, I really used to enjoy transcribing piano players and yeah. guitar players, bass players because the, the range of the instrument was easier for me to transcribe those notes. So I recall myself reaching out to bass professors around, yo, can I take a lesson with you? So it's important and to get the perspective perspective from different teachers from dif- different instruments as well is extremely important the different roles yeah. that that the band members play and why Absolutely. you know how you connect i think that's that's so important you hit you hit it right on the head yeah you need to know you know the bass is the heartbeat of the band you need to sit in a room and play solo with the bass player yeah talk to a great bass player so they can tell you their role mm-hmm. talk to the drummer you know how the rise symbol pushes the band. you know you need to know these things as an instrumentalist mm-hmm. and it just makes you more well-rounded as a soloist and as an instrumentalist you know yeah definitely i mean stay you know stay in touch and i think that's great advice for anybody you know out there wanting to just take a lesson if you're a drummer if you're man heck if you're a vocalist i, I i'm gonna call you up marquis i would be like 
hey, well, let's take a lesson or let's, you know, Please. it's 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 so important because we we as vocalists or instrumentalists, sometimes we don't even think that right as vice versa. It's like the instrumentalists mm -hmm. are trying to incorporate and and sound like a voice and sound, you know, like they are the voice. Right. And the vo vocalists are trying to be the melodic <laughs> sound of the instrument, you know, and so. Sometimes we, we, we forget those connections, and I think it's so important that we're, we, we forget to, to think about that. I, at least I'm just thinking about it right now, you know? <laughs> Again, you hit it right on the head. Like, when I play the trumpet, I'm trying to mimic what you do. I'm mm -hmm. trying to mimic the voice. I tell all my younger students, your instrument, the trumpet, the saxophone, that's just an extension of your original instrument, which is your voice. We're trying to sing. We're trying to, you know? Yep. So when I mean, you hit it right on the head, yeah, absolutely, man. You know, we were talking, and I want to, sh I want to share this with our audience members. Um, we were talking yesterday before we were getting on this show, uh, just making sure everything was running smoothly. But man, you, uh, one of one of my favorite vocalists is has been Kurt Elling, and man, we talked about how you had the opportunity to play with the amazing Kurt Elling. Please tell us like how you felt about it. What was your experience? I mean, W O W like that's probably like a dream come <laughs> true, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kurt is uh, he's a master. He's a master vocalist. He has complete control over his instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, me personally, it's, it's a dream gig. I've always wanted to be able to play in a in an ensemble behind a vocalist where my job is just to play pretty notes behind the vocalist and and that was my that was my role touring with Kurt um you know we would interact on stage throughout the night and then he has the ability to hop into a bag where it feels like oh I'm on stage with another horn player yeah we're trading we're sparring and then we can go into a ballad and he can sing this lush beautiful ballad and and then the, his, he's a man, he's incredible. His lyricism and, you know, he writes lyrics over these melodies. He's, he's a bad man. It was, it was a beautiful, you know, experience to be able to tour with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember watching, um, a YouTube, you know, video of you guys. Um, I think it was like the North Sea or North Jazz, North Sea Jazz or mm -hmm. something like that. And he was singing, you know, Abel and my Abel always puts this this song on and it's called Endless Lawn. Lawn. Yeah. And I'm just like, that song, if you guys haven't heard it, let check me just it say, <laughs> check it out because that's a great example of what we were just talking about. The instrument yeah. em emulating the voice, the voice emulating that instrument sound. Like how these two combine and Marquise, you do a beautiful and amazing job um oh, thank you. you know playing alongside with him and then you know that song like you said like the solo you know how oh. he puts words to a so the solo i mean oh my god it's just mind-blowing and yeah. i you know that that just says a lot about you know the agility and the technique that both you and him have as professional musicians um yeah, but master. yeah a master for sure so i want to go on to this next tune um and how about we play it first and then we'll talk about it uh, uh, afterwards. So I want you guys to turn up your volumes. Uh, and this is a song called They Say This Is Love uh, by the in the album Love Tapes with Voices by Mr. Marquise Hill. So check it out. Here it goes. God is love. I am God. I am love. God is love. I am God. I am love. God is love. I am God. God is love. I am love. I am God. God is love. I am love. I am God. I am love. I am love. God is love. God is love. I am God. I am God. I am love. God is love. God is love. I am God. I am God. I am love. Oh 
measure you trust my love for you there is no one but me for me all I can see is us they say this is love song about love right there (laughs) beautiful beautiful man tell us about this tune about this album i love it (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's that's one of my favorites um yeah this is a tune from a project called love tape um and you know the title says it all it's a project that deals with just the concept of love and i was I, i was working on this project and the concept behind this project during a time that I was just thinking about, you know, love, like what does love mean to, first of all, what does it mean to me? And just what it like, it's because it's such a broad word and we know it's hard to really define, but we know what it is when we feel it or yeah. when we see a mother, a mother with her child or, you know, we, we know the sensation of it, but it's so hard to define. So mm. I wanted to play with that concept uh, throughout this project. And that was a tune um, that was kind of, spawned spawned from you know this working on this project and uh throughout the process of creating the project i went through and i interviewed people and primarily women primarily black women Mm. uh just about their concept of love and also went online and i chopped up interviews you know i I put this thing together um but yeah it's just something that deals with what like what what is love you know but we again we know what it is when we feel it when we see it um, so I just kind of wanted to deal with that concept with this project. Man, uh, and just so you know, showing some love right now. He just, he just, he's just watching right now. It's Mr. Willem Dellersport. He, he, he says fans, and he's giving the the love. You know, that's already the form of love, right? Just tuning yeah, in awesome. right on time for that it's love. Awesome. <laughs> no, My bro. I, I mean, and and I'm gonna say this like I love the concept that you interviewed, like women and their concept of love like the the mind like sometimes sometimes people who are not musicians uh or you know music lovers just think Mm -hmm. that oh we we write we get the pen write it down and and it just kind of happens and sometimes it does Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. the concept of moving forward and i think it has shown so much in your music of the depth that you go into of the 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 reality of what <laughs> you're really trying to you know portray in your music really mm-hmm. comes across in what you have obviously in this song that you just mentioned i think just mm-hmm. the simple like god is love love is god like just even something mm-hmm. like that and thinking about all these concepts so i really mm-hmm. admire that i really admire how you really take that time to move forward with 
the concept and what you're really trying to write when you're putting, you know, an album or this whole thing together. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. You know, artists, we're, we're inspired. You know, we have to be inspired by something. And, and for this project, it was these interviews and, mm -hmm. you know, just me thinking, getting deep into the thought of like, what, what does this, this mystery word love mean? So thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, and I have to shout out the vocalist. That's Chris Turner. I was just going to ask, vocalist. is Chris Turner? Yeah. I'm not familiar with Chris Turner, yeah. man. How did you meet? How did you meet? Like, how did you guys meet or what? How did it even come across to that? Yeah, Chris is, uh, I met Chris just on the, on the New York scene. Okay. He's, you know, he's been around. He's, he's bad. I think he's out in LA now, but, um, he was in New York at the time. Nice. Uh, and I just reached out him, reached out to him when I was writing this tune specifically, you know, I wrote the lyrics and I, I heard the melody and I just, I heard his voice right away. So I reached out to him and he hopped on it and killed it. Beautiful, beautiful. Man, yeah. that's great. Well, shout out to Chris uh, Turner, who did an amazing job and, and, and Marquise with this beautiful uh, song. They say this is love. Um, and again, you guys were, were po just posting on the chat, like you know, go to Marquise Hills, you know, website. Uh, we'll pin it on the chat um, so that you guys, you know, that's how you support artists. Go to the Bandcamp yeah. page, go buy their 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 music, support them. I mean, heck, everybody's on on social media and, and websites and, and and computers on for so many hours uh it only takes like five seconds to just like and and support you know it really helps uh music artists um and so I, w I wanted to i wanted to ask you in regards to um i have i have i have so many questions but i know we we only have some time but uh mm -hmm. talking about your experience you know as your career has you know continued after you won the competition with the Lonious Monk competition and, and starting, you know, putting putting all these albums together. I know you had that group, the Black Tet. That was amazing. Um, and then you had the experience to go on to um, the Blue Note, uh, the Jazz Cruise. And, uh, you know, you got to, like, do the sailing back-to-back -back kind of thing. And I... What was that experience like? When was the first time you went on and you were like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna be on this jazz cruise and I'm gonna be with all these amazing people"? Like, how was that experience? Oh man, it was incredible. I <laughs> I miss it now. <laughs> this would be the time we would be on it right now, actually in February. Really? Oh wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, funny enough. Wow. But you know, I started playing with Marcus Miller, uh, the incredible bassist Marcus Ooh. Miller maybe five years ago. Um, and he, you know, he was the first artist to bring me onto the jazz cruise. And I mean, it's, it's literally, you know, there's, there's a jazz cruise and there's the blue note cruise. Right, right, they're right. Very, Two different ones. Yeah. They're very, yeah. They're very similar, but, um, it's, <laughs> if you can imagine a jazz fest, 24 hours a day, there's music, <laughs> there's music everywhere. 24 hours a day, there's food, there's drink, then all the musicians are around. So it's, it's a big hang. It really is a, it's a fellowship. Um, yeah, I miss it very much. <laughs> when, when was the first time you went? You went. Uh, what year did you go for for that? I want to say twenty to twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Wow! Wow! Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, have you? How does it work? Do you continue doing it, or is it just kind of they call you as a special guest? Uh, how does that work? Yeah. I think, I mean, you know, they have rotating guests that they bring in. Okay. But each time I went, I was uh, playing with Marcus. Got it. Marcus. Got it. I went, actually, I went two years with Kurt Elling as well. And, um, I, yeah, I think the times that I was on both of those cruises was through Marcus and through Kurt. Man, well, uh, hopefully when, when things get back to normal, mm -hmm. uh, well, we might see mm -hmm. uh, the Marquis, you know, Hill uh, group uh at the like jazz club like i'll have to buy my yeah. ticket in advance so we can uh take that cruise you know be out in the ocean and party 24 hours like you said <laughs> uh, that, that sounds incredible right now <laughs> i know everyone just close your eyes and let's just remember no. let's try to remember right. you know that that lovely smell <laughs> of the water and just being out yeah. and you know just the the beauty of like being together and just you know even if it's that person standing you too close to the bar, like I, I, I'm okay with that now. Like I miss it, you know, I just miss all that, 
you know, for granted. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, I need my space. And now it's like, no, I, I need more people. You know, I need more people. So, man, hey, this might be the time where, you know, like you said, in your music, like the love is we're going to we're missing all that. We're missing that connectivity with each other, you know, physically um, in so mm -hmm. many ways. So I, 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 man, yeah, I definitely believe that. I, I, I agree. I, I agree. People. <laughs> I think once we get out of this, if we get out of this, when we get out of this, people, they're yearning for, for music. They're yearning for connection. They're yearning to go see these live performances. So I think uh, musicians and artists and creatives will come out of this on top because people need that interaction of energy. Amen. So I look, I look forward to that. Yeah, amen to that. Now, uh, shout out to, I think, Joel Ross is tuning in with us tonight. Joel nice to see you <laughs> we got all these all these cats tuning in now all, they heard you they heard you said love and and jazz cruise and all these things and now they're tuning in over here <laughs> anyways um i wanted to uh talk about this next tune um that uh is also well it's on a different album the modern flows volume two uh, give us a little insight on this and and uh this tune that we're gonna listen to soon what what what's uh when did this come out? What was the idea and concept of this album? Mm -hmm. uh, Modern Flows Volume 2, we put that one out, I want to say 2019, okay. I believe. Um, and again, it's a volume two. And just the concept behind Modern Flows in general is, you know, I, I got to a point where I erased all of the barrier, the genre barriers in my mind. And I now just see all of these different genres as one big music because it all comes from the same tree mm, uh, beautiful so modern flows deals with combining you know jazz rhythms and you know the jazz quintet you know the the sound of jazz and also combining the sound of hip-hop and it's all the same thing again so i just kind of played with blurring that line with this project volume one and also volume two uh, and this track specifically is uh ego versus spirit and actually, Joel, Joel is on this track as well. Hey, uh, Joel, you see, Joel, Joel knew he was going to be uh, uh, mentioned on this. He, he knew he, we were going to be playing this song, and he just tuned in right at the right time. Man, uh, for those of you audience members, Joel, uh, Joel Ross is the vibraphone player. Amazing. Hopefully, we'll get to have him on the show as well. Um, but, yeah, he's on that. But, yeah, let's take a listen. Uh, everybody turn up your volume, and let's uh, check out Ego versus Spirit. I know this is a... A longer tune, but let's let's check it out. Let's see how it goes.
you got the spirit and then you got the ego. Mm. Spirit, spirit be like, I don't need it, but I got it, so I give. Ego be like, better keep it, needy gotta pay my rent. Spirit be like, treat them right so your daughters get a path. Ego be like, damn my offspring, I'm trying to get the ass. Ego self over village, spirit village over self, cipher over battle, ever flowing over one off. If you can't afford to book me, I'ma cop a ticket and still come out and bring hella people cause attendance is support. And because I'm thinking about the people I don't know drinking from the reservoir. I won't let my ego get in the way of the populace. That show I attended gave a gig or a job to the people serving the audience. I'd rather prop them up, add to the ambiance instead of sabotage, but there is a caveat. Mm. Ego be blocking out. Sunshine for photosynthetic, stopping the growth from the planet. Thinking that solar is planted, ignore the spirit and you'll grow to regret it. I say if you ignore the spirit, you'll grow to regret it. It's sort of pathetic to tell your homie you're not paying at the door because your credit ain't got nothing to do with your motive or debit. If you was broke, you should have approached him, humble, told him, and said it. Asked if he could hold you over or granted. Instead, you basically told him he owes you and that you hold him for granted. Mm. That ego? Put your character hella low on the totem indebted friendly financial transactions because it couldn't hold the mechanics. Plot twist. Your homie spirit? Your homie spirit told him don't panic, but instead create a safe space for growth and expanding because he know your heart. He know your heart wasn't in the right place. Fight or flight just threw it off pace. Solved case. Woo. I, I gotta do the little snaps for those <laughs> that beautiful spoken word. Man, beautiful. Yeah, shout out. That's Brandon Alexander Williams. Wow, shout out, Brandon. Incredible poet, yeah. Uh, Michael Mayo on the background vocals as well. I, I was just going to ask you, who was who were those background vocals? That's awesome. Yeah. I loved it. He, he, his addition to the track really lifted the entire thing. So, yeah, shout out, Michael, for that. Man, who, el who else was on, th on, this, on this album and this recording that we just heard? Yeah, um, this recording specifically, it's uh, kind of the core group. Um, Joel Ross, uh, Junius Paul is on bass. Mm. Uh, Jonathan Pinson is on drums on this one. Uh, that's Josh Johnson on saxophone. Awesome. Uh, myself and Brandon Alexander Williams on spoken word, and Michael Mayo on background. Uh, there's a bunch of different spoken word artists throughout the project, but yeah, check it out if you haven't. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I man, I I love also the concept of spoken word and 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 music. It's just it goes together. You know, it's it's so powerful it in so many ways. Um, but yeah, I, I I'll I'll reach out to you outside of 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 our interview because I I want to get to know some more uh, you know poets and do some some projects. I think that's great. So ideas out there to audience members or musicians you know think about your poets who are are relaying some amazing messages Absolutely. and really getting in depth with you know not only lyricists but vocalists or anything like that poets are are just great so beautiful mm -hmm. and i know you know what i do know we also talked a little bit about this that um you you actually put you had the chance to play with uh, the wdr big band and I think, if I'm not mistaken, this song, uh, you played with the band, right? Yeah, Man, that's right. Actually. That's awesome. What What was the experience with that? Whew. It was incredible, man. I, I, I flew over for, I think it was 10 days total. It was super professional. Ger German, Germans, you know, they're, <laughs> they're on. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So we rehearsed, yeah. we rehearsed like five days. Uh, then we had, you know, five or six shows and it was incredible. They arranged all of my original music and wow. you know, super professional. I came into rehearsal, the music, they recorded the rehearsals. They played the music, you know, effortlessly. It was, it was incredible. It was a good vibe. You know? Wow. Wow. And was that, um, was that your first time playing with, uh, with the band? Yeah, that. That was my first time playing with WDR, yeah. Wow. And and you were saying, where where was it that it was located that you guys recorded? Do you remember? Yeah, I believe we were in it's Cologne, Cologne, Germany. Cologne, Germany. Yeah, Ooh. I'm supposed to be doing something with them um, 
fingers crossed and you know in the future sometime this year or next year oh. uh, but it, it really was a wonderful experience just hearing a different perspective of your music and it being arranged for big bands so it, it was cool man that's beautiful yeah i mean i, I remember checking it out um on youtube and i i remember you know ego versus spirit that's why i was like wow to hear the different concept but Man, and, and, you know, we, uh, we mentioned our a good friend of ours, uh, piano player, Billy Test, who, you mm -hmm. know, over here from, from this area is is playing with them. And so, I mean, amazing musicians just in general, just to even have that opportunity, Marquise, I'm sure, has been was a dream and just sure. mind-blowing playing with, you know, all these amazing musicians as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's beautiful. <laughs> Whew, man. And, you know, the concept of of, you know, when people say, jazz trumpeter who also embarks hip-hop pop bebop blues you know i loved you know when you said earlier of how you think of you know all these genres as as part of the tree right it's there's the root and then it just kind of branches off what what can you give us a little more about how your concept of how you think of you know because if somebody who is not familiar with listening to jazz music for say and they listen to your music, they might say, oh, this is pop or hip hop because they're listening to spoken word because of maybe certain beats or mm -hmm. vice versa. Right. Where, you know, hip hop artists are like, no, that's more jazz because of saxophone, trumpet being, you know, what 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 is your concept on that? Yeah, um, I mean, it's pretty much what I what I kind of said earlier. Uh, I went through a phase where, you know, we're, we're all kind of taught that this is jazz, this is hip hop, this is pop, this is this, this is this. But the more you dig and study the true history, you see that it all comes from Black American music. Mm. You know, it all derives from the blues and gospel and yep. the, the ring shouts that were on the plantations and the music just progressed through the Black American black American experience and and then swing was invented and Dixieland and this different mm -hmm. genre, genres were invented but they're really just expressions of you know black Americans doing those different eras and when you really listen to the music and know the history it you know it comes from the same place and the moment I was able to make that connection myself you know it really opened up my playing and it opened up my writing and now when I sit to write music, I'm not thinking, okay, I'm, I have to write <laughs> a jazz quintet piece yeah. I need to write. It's just, I'm just creating music and you hear all these different influences. Um, and for me, it was really liberating and freeing to just erase these genre boundaries and just be able to create and truly know that it's it truly is coming from the same place. It's all coming from the same place when you study the history of the music yeah. and that's beautiful because I, I love it you know i think the way that you're you know the product after it after the mesh of all that what you just said and how it just comes out is just like the true evidence of this is how it all works this is how it comes to mm -hmm. peace the feel good music the how it makes you mm -hmm. feel how it makes you you know think of certain things or emotions i i mean i think we always you know are tend to you know, what will we do without music? What will we do, uh, you know, especially in this pandemic when when musicians were just like shut down for everything. And then all of a sudden people were relying on musicians to give them comfort and and feeling and 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 really saying, oh, wow, like I do need this music in my life. I do need music in general in our lives mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. have and to connect with people. I think it's it's so important yeah. on that end. People miss it, man. People, people, like I said before, people are really yearning. We we need that connection, like we do. Yeah, we need. You know, it's it's not just about the music. To be honest, right. it's about the whole process of going to a venue, meeting the people, you know, shaking hands afterwards, sitting down. Those are hardworking people. Yep coming to spend their hard earned money to hear us play and connect through music so we we just really need that exchange and like i look forward to that day again <laughs> yeah definitely sure. and and sure. just to add on to uh another question that i wanted to bring up is that i know you have a um a record label um and and i think that's something that i just wanted to you know let people know is called the black unlimited music group can you give us a little bit you know on that yeah, you know, um, I've been producing 
you know, my own music independently since, you know, 2012. My very first project was New Gospel. Um, and I've just always, you know, had this, this kind of mindset of just doing things for myself. It could be, I know actually it's the Aries energy. In us. <laughs> you're, you're, you're an Aries, so I know you can relate. Yeah. That's, that's nothing, nothing greater than, you know, envisioning something and doing it yourself, putting your energy into it. So I get, I, I really do get a kick out of, you know, creating my own music and moving to my own beat. Uh, but also it's important in these days for artists to own their music, like own their product, own their, their likeliness, own their, their masters, own their compositions, own their publishing. To me, that's really important. And, you know, you, you study the history of this music and you see this has been a struggle for a lot of black musicians, how record labels really get over on black musicians. Not to say that's happening today, but for me, it's just really, it's crucial for me to own my own, you know, my own shit, to be honest. Yeah, man. I mean, you bring up a great point, you know, and just, you know, at, for students getting out of, you know, school, like, you know, new school or Manhattan school of music, like all these great uh, conservatories and schools that, you know, help you get your career or, you know, get your career started. And then you go and you say like, man, my goal is to get on this record label. And then all of a sudden, you know, you realize the music industry is so different than what, you know, a lot of people think, you know. And I also think that musicians aren't taught so much about the music industry. So some ki kind of come in without the knowledge or without the idea or the mere idea of how things really work. And, you know, I think just you saying owning your music is so important yeah. and having and creating your label and having this um, is really, really important. And, and are you, um, at, you know, getting artists to be part of your label? How does that work? Yeah, that is the next step. I, I initially created it to, you know, just put my own uh, product and my own projects out. But again, what we were talking about earlier, just that continuum and giving back to the younger artists. So, you know, I'm in talks with artists here in Chicago about putting out projects on the label and just walking them through the process of how it works. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely in the near future. That's mm -hmm. that's awesome. We'll have to we'll have to bring you back on to just talk just about uh, record labels and how that works and, and you know, passing on that uh, knowledge and that information, I think is always helpful. And, you know, any of you mm -hmm. tuning in, I'm sure Mr. Marquise Hill, Hill here would be uh, okay with you reaching out and asking any questions uh, in regards to, you know, record labels. And so what's, what's uh, uh, upcoming? What's, what, what do we have upcoming? I know you have something this Friday. Uh, can you give a little uh, update on that and how people can maybe uh, watch you this Friday? Yeah, um, we're doing a um, pretty much a tribute to just some of the most prolific jazz composers to come out of the city of Chicago. Uh, the name of the project is Made in Chicago, and um, it's an all Chicago based band. And we're again celebrating, you know, the music of Von Freeman, uh, Lester Bowie, Ooh. Nicky Mitchell, Jeff Parker, Fred Anderson, uh, Malachi Thompson, just some of these staple names in the city. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing that with people. Uh, cause there's a, what time is a really it at? Yeah, it's uh, 9 p.m. EST. No, 8. Well, what time is the show? 9 p.m. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Okay, I think we'll 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 make sure we share it on um right. on the on the chat as well, so everybody can tune in, check out on Friday night uh, with mm -hmm. Marquise Hill and all these amazing uh, musicians, you know, honoring and and featuring, highlighting uh, musicians from Chicago area. Man, Marquise, it has really been, you know, I, I know I could keep going and we can continue and everybody here, you know, might have more questions, but it really has been an honor to have you on here to just talk and, and you know, pick your brain and, and listen to your concepts of, of music and how you just do this beautiful art, artistry. Uh, you know, thank you for sharing your music and your stories with us um, this evening. It really means a lot to us and the listeners uh, tonight. So we really appreciate you. Thank you. I, I appreciate you and what you and April are doing is, you know, it's important to the community. So bravo to you and thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much. And so 
Um, before we leave, uh, I do want to mention is that we're giving away um, some giveaways from our locally owned business um, from the brood, Brooklyn Brood Sorel. And so um, I just want to put up on the screen here, we're going to have a giveaway for 15% off uh, to all of you listeners here tonight. Uh, so go to uh, Brooklyn Brood Sorel, uh, use this coupon code JAZZ15, and you'll get 15% off on any of the um, products uh, with Nzinga Night. As we mentioned, we're always highlighting uh, at each of our shows a locally owned business, especially this month is uh, uh, black owned businesses. So check that out and um you know, do that coupon, get, get, get everything you need. But Marquise, I'm going to put you on the spot. I need you to pick a number. Uh, and don't tell me yet. Don't tell me yet. I'm going to pick a number from one through a hundred, whatever number you want. But everybody who's tuning in live with us, put in the chat a number before Mr. Marquise Hill says his number. Uh, we're going to have one lucky winner tonight who will get a $25 gift card for Brooklyn Brood Sorel. And I do want to mention, you can also purchase merchandise from Mr. Marquise Hill on his website on Bandcamp. So make sure you get, you know, some of those uh, Soul Sign uh, bags and, you know, all those cool sweaters and stuff like that. It's always good to support. So everybody, if you guys can tune in our listeners right now, put in a number from one through a hundred, any number that you'd like. And Mr. Marquise Hill is going to pick that number. And whoever that is, whether it's closer to the number or that number, uh, then you will be uh, the lucky winner. So I'm going to make sure we get some people in. Drum roll here. <laughs> All right. Everybody's putting in here. Let's see. All right. We got some numbers. Willem says it feels like the price is right. That's right, Willem. It feels like the price is right. We're, we're, you might win tonight. I won't tell Marquise what number you picked. Marquise, you can't look at the chat and, and don't cheat over here. <laughs> no cheating. Okay, so I think most of our, our uh, mostly everybody here has put in a number. And okay, so Marquise. We're going to put some background music, maybe like Pet Prices, right? Woo! What number is that lucky winner tonight for $25 gift card? Are you serious? Wow. Santiago Navarro. He, he is a trumpet player. He is one of our alumni from the Jazz Exchange uh, Education Program. Santiago, congratulations. You just won the $25 gift card to brooklyn brood sorel uh thank you guys everybody for tuning in we appreciate it thank you marquise you're the best man uh like we always say mi casa su casa amigo all the time here we hope to have you again soon and we'll be tuning in on friday to check you out all right have a good night thank you everyone we'll see you all next wednesday for the start of women's history month with melissa walker from jazz house kids Bye. God is love. I am God. I am love. God is love. I am God. I am love. God is love. I am God. God is love. I am love. I am God. God is love. I am love. I am God. I am love. I am love. God is love. God is love. I am God. I am God. I am love. God is love. God is love. I am God.
God is love, I am God, I am love. God is love, I am God, I am love. God is love, I am God. God is love, I am love. I am God. God is love, I am love. I am God, I am love. I am love. God is love, God is love. I am God, I am God, I am love. God is love, God is love. I am God. God is love, I am God, I am love. Cancer, your ruling planet is the moon. Your modality is cardinal and your element is water this means that you lead with your emotions and your motto I feel as a cancer your feelings define and empower you the zodiac sign ruled by the moon, La Luna herself. You hold an ancient wisdom within your soul that not only makes you an old soul tied to memories and the treasures of the past, but that also gives you a deep inner knowing with which you lead your life bravely, soulfully, providing a deep well of love and strength for others, especially those you call family along the way. Being associated with the element of water means that your feelings often ebb and flow like the tide. While this might be considered being moody to some, you're actually using your feelings like a barometer, adjusting to the temperature of the room, whether it's with another person or within a situation. But when it comes to your feelings, just make sure that you don't allow them to sweep you out to sea. As with the crab that represents your sign, very few can get through your tough outer shell Unless, of course, you want them to. 